So welcome back to the 2017 FIM CV Repsol. It's round one here from Albacete in southern Spain. We've just had an enthralling European Talent Cup race and we move on to the European Moto2 Championship. This is going to be very, very exciting. As we mentioned earlier on in the broadcast, it was very wet yesterday. Not so much today. Very dry, very nice, a bit windy and a bit chilly in a few places. Yeah, I spoke to most of the riders and they said it was horrible, horrible conditions. It was too cold to ride and as a rider, it's it's sometimes it ain't even fun to ride in the wet like that. So, uh, sun's out, track's completely dry and uh, it's good because Moto2 got to see, you know, this, this race before to see if there's any wet patches or anything and clearly there's not. So, uh, they got a warm up this morning which was 90% dry, we'll say. And I spoke to Joe and he says that uh, there's some good feelings and they came here testing two weeks ago. So most riders will be putting that setup on the bike straight into this race. And that's what's going to be interesting. It's going to be a, a free for all in the first few laps. Turn, turn four is going to be a little bit <laughs> hairball. <laughs> that tight, you know, it's a tight right hander, heavy braking after turn one, two and three. Um, but hopefully they all make it through. and. Uh, yeah, Steven had some issues yesterday on the now uh, in, the, in the wet. I think he had issues in the qualifying one. Yeah, so he had a technical problem yeah, in qualifying one. And then Q2, it rained harder, so it was harder for them to go quicker. Mm. But I'm sure he'll be up in the front. He just needs a good start and, you know, go with the, go with the front group. Absolutely. Well, the 3.5 kilometer circuit here in Albacete plays host to round one of the European uh, Moto2 Championship. Opened in 1990, of course, this Albacete circuit was modified uh, a little bit later on as well to have a few changes uh, in a couple of areas. But uh, I'm not sure if it's not the oldest track, but it's one of, you know, one of the top ranks in Spain of older tracks. Yeah, because Catalonia opened in 1991. I yeah, believe, so. yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's Harama. There's so many nice, great racetracks here that long time ago you know nietos used to race at and and uh you know i i i, I was talking yesterday to curtis roberts uh, oh, Kenny yeah. roberts son because i went to the u.s uh, last year to race and uh i was training at their ranch they have a ranch over there in modesto and uh i was telling him that i was coming down here and i was set to do some commentary work and he's like Oh, Albacete, I love that place. I used to race there, you know, in the times with Aspar. And he says, there's a play great place there for meat. And he was talking about the jamón, and that's what everyone <laughs> looks at in Spain. So it was great to speak to him. And uh, But, yeah, here we go, another race to go. Um, this should be a good one. Absolutely, yeah, all riders lining up on the grid. And uh, it's said to be a very, very exciting race here uh, in Albacete. There's uh, a couple of changes, and a couple of riders up the sharp end of the uh, pecking order that we weren't perhaps expecting due to the uh, wet weather yesterday. I've got the grid order here, and somebody who I wasn't expecting on the grid at all, because he wasn't on the provisional entry list, uh, was Hafish Sayarin, of course, from the uh, Moto2 World Championship. Yeah, it was funny because uh, I was talking to Joe, and uh, Joe was like, man, did you see Sirens here? And uh, he's like, he's he's in the world championship. Why is he here? And <laughs> But I told him, listen, you know, it, it's good because you get to ride with someone that has more experience than you, and it'll make you as a, a faster rider. So uh, it's going to be definitely. But I, I was talking to the team, and he's basically doing some CV rounds for, for practice because they didn't really have a good um, – preseason testing because uh, it rained in Valencia so they're here basically using it as testing for the world championship yeah absolutely well we thank you ever so much for tuning in wherever it is that you are in the world here uh, watching the FIM CEV rep so it's an exciting championship uh, for the 2017 season there is the pole man Hafish Siren keep an eye out for him because he could be a very interesting man in this race lining up of course uh, with the Patronus Calex machine there he is slots himself into pole position we'll run you through the grid order uh, momentarily but the uh, Malaysian of course who wild carded first in Moto2 in the World Championship in 2012 of course that particularly wet race where he would end up uh, making an absolutely stonking start and uh, was battling in the leading group uh, right up until the end and I think he finished in about third position at the end of that race which is very very exciting indeed and of course uh, made his World Championship uh, debut uh, about two years ago um, did Hafish Siren and is looking great out there so far to try and uh, get himself up in and amongst the 
the higher point and paying positions. And of course, being a world championship rider, uh, we shouldn't really expect anything less than him uh, being up towards the sharp end, Dakota. Sorry, I just, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just came back. <laughs> there we go. We were just talking about uh, Hafish Siren and how competing oh. in the CV, and we should expect him to be up the sharp end, given his world championship status. 100%. You know, and uh, he's a great rider in the rain, really fast rider in the rain, I know. And he actually did his fastest lap time in Q2 yesterday in the in the pouring rain when it was worse conditions. But um, he, he'll definitely be in the front. And like I said, um, he's using this as testing for the world championship. I don't see why not. Uh, and he, it's the best. Well, that's it Dima, Dima Secchi, who's oh. got a bit of paper saying, speedy <laughs> recovery, my friend. Uh, that's in reference to Alan Tesher. Okay. Who had a, uh, yeah, he had a bad crash. Nasty yeah. crash. Yeah. I hope he's okay out there. And uh, wh where was it? Uh, Japan. 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 Yeah, somewhere Japan. in Japan. He was, said, was it Suzuka or something like yeah. that? He was testing. Um, and yeah, had a really nasty crash, did Alan Tesher. So we do wish him all the best. And uh, nice to see Dima Secchi, the top Indonesian rider, starting from the front row. A brilliant qualifying for Dima Secchi. Looking great out there. And obviously had. Uh, had uh, his flip-flops on, not flip-flops on, rather, I should say flippers on yesterday in those wet weather conditions. <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, it's good also to see Hector up there and uh, all these different names in the front because uh, we're, you know, last year seeing always Eric Granado and Steven always at the front because they're such fast riders and uh, it's kind of shift around a bit. But I think now in the dry conditions, we should uh, we should see, you know, the, the faster riders in the front and... Uh, like I said, you need a good start. Here's Joe Roberts, no hat, just yeah. letting the hair flow. <laughs> Is he doing that peace sign to you, do you reckon? <laughs> I'm not sure. He's like, make sure you talk good about me. I'm like, ah, OK, uh, we'll maybe. See how we we'll go. see, yeah. <laughs> Depends how you do in the race. <laughs> Absolutely. Joe Roberts, uh, the brand new signing for the AGR team in uh, 2017, has uh, had a background racing uh, in America, hasn't he? And uh, Yeah, he actually was, uh, he dominated the 600 class. and. Uh, Super stock and then rode for Super Sport last year. I think he finished fourth in the championship or something. And now he's, you know, he's he's moved uh, to Moto2. I know he's been willing to to come to Europe. Everyone's dreams to come to Europe and race uh, because it's where basically everyone's kids' dreams are. Uh, basically to move to the World Championship. So uh, and I was speaking to him and he just loves it here. Uh, here's Eric Granado, the Brazilian. Yeah, Granado in uh, sixth position, and of course he had an amazing championship uh, last year. Was uh, sitting right up uh, in and amongst the uh, best championship uh, positions, battling with Odendahl and the like. And actually ended up finishing uh, the championship in fourth position. So keep an eye out for him as well. And we have just got confirmation of the tyre choices as well for the uh, uh, Moto2 championship in Europe. And uh, I'll give you, uh, we'll give you a full rundown of that in just a few moments. I noticed actually the track temperature has dropped ever so slightly compared to how hot it was for the start of the European Talent Cup race. It was 20 degrees and now it's 18 degrees. I mean, I know it's only a couple of degrees, but does it make that much of a difference? 20 to 18, not so much, but you know what makes a difference is the wind. Uh, mm. Wind can actually affect a lot, uh, but it, it shouldn't affect for two degrees right now. And uh, as long as, you know, that sun keeps creeping in and out, we, they should be fine. I was talking to Joe, and I think most riders are, are running a, uh, a softer front and, you know, medium rear. Um, but um, it's, I think, like I said, 18 laps to this race, is it? And uh, 20. 20. 20 laps. for the Moto2. Okay, so, uh, yeah, he's, he didn't complain much about tire, tire issues around here. Um, the lap is quite short, uh, 1 minute 30. Uh, they should be doing probably 1 minute 32s in the dryer something similar to that and uh um but anyways um yeah it was good to good to see joe again after a few months back and uh like i said like i was saying earlier he loves it here it's so much he he was uh very happy and uh yeah, you got to go for a bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no so, worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were just talking about Stephen Odendahl as well, and he was looking great out there. I mean, yes, as you said, a few technical issues, lining up in eighth on the grid for the start of this uh, Moto2 race. Yeah, I was talking to him about um, his chassis. You know, he's running the uh, the NTS uh, bike, and uh, and him knowing the Calyx so well from racing the past few years on the on that AGR team and. And running now the NTS, he actually uh, he actually wasn't complaining too much about the bike. He actually liked the uh, the chassis. He said the the front actually feels really good. He can brake really deep on it, and uh, they need to improve a little bit more the rear. 
Uh, that's the only thing. Here's uh, Chaver Cardeluz, and uh, the only Andorian, basically, rider on the grid right now. And uh, he had a, actually an okay season last year. It's good to see him back here. Nice Alpine Star Leathers. And um, yeah, another rider I want to talk about is uh, Jason, uh, Joe Roberts' teammate, uh, another American. It's great to see us Americans out there. Uh, and uh, we need more. But um, yeah, it's good to see basically Jason out there again. Last year he had an okay season. It was his first season last year in Moto2. Uh, coming from the US Jason I was talking about and uh, It'll be interesting Everyone's putting their gloves on and it's soon gonna be basically race to go Absolutely. Yeah, Jason uh, Uribe as well. He's uh, he's looking great out there so far I mean uh, the yeah, he had an okay season last year because it was his first I think it was his first year and you know when you're here It's new to you. Everything's new the paddock you, you know, you got to get through some things. And uh, I think this year is his year that he needs to, you know, show and prove everyone his talent. And I know he's got some good talent. Indeed, yeah. Here's the grid then. Hafish Sirin starts from pole position for the first time in 2017. Hector Garzo and the Indonesian rider Dimas Eki rounds out the first row. Brenner, Roberts, Granado on row two. Augusto Fernandez, the reigning European champion, Stephen Odendahl in the middle of row three. Then further back, Federico Fellini, Xavier Cardaluz, David Sanchez is on row four. Jason Uribe, Hiroki Ono, Greg Black on row five. Row six, Pontus Dierland, Jurka Mukufka and Thomas Stigvartsen on row six. And and to real to the back of the grid, Marco Luna, Lucas Tolovic, and Jamie Edwards, the uh, first Briton on the grid, and the only Briton on the grid in the uh, European Moto2 Championship, riding the Nikos machine as well. Now, I've not heard too much about this bike, but I think it's uh, they've been testing it over in Britain for quite some time. So uh, No, I haven't heard about it either. Um, I, I, was it here last year? I'm not, I'm wasn't not sure. It wasn't in the European Championship last year. It no, was not. So. But, uh, you know, he's been, uh, he was racing last year for Nikos, um, okay. developing that bike, basically. So they decided okay. to bring it up to the international or the European stage. Maybe it probably just needs some more time. Absolutely, yeah. Jay, uh, he's uh, looking good out there, though, is, uh, is Jamie as well. We'll have to catch up with him at some point and gather his thoughts on the bike and the uh, team and the like. Yeah, I was telling him you know, earlier about uh, Stephen, about the NTS, how he wasn't complaining too much about that, you know, about that chassis. And uh, he was actually saying how that front was feeling good on him. And he said he can break a lot deeper than on the Calyx, which was surprising to, to hear. And uh, they've actually brought a softer frame for this weekend right okay that's really interesting so and i'm not sure he said they haven't used it yet in the wet conditions but uh i wonder if they're using it here in the race yeah absolutely so happy sire and there he is the pole man keep an eye out for him the number 55 of course also competing in the world championship eric granado on the second row could be very interesting and the reigning champion stephen odendahl in eighth position in the middle of row number four Keep an eye out for him. Sorry, row number three, I should say, for Odin Dahl. So the green flag is waved at the back, and we wait for the riders to head off on their sighting lap. And thank you so much for tuning in to the FIM European Moto2 Championship here today. It's great. We have a great front row of seats. Indeed, we've got a fantastic view out of this country. I wish we could show the people Today, isn't it? It's great. This is uh, this is really wonderful. So uh, it's going to be a very interesting race. This in the European Moto2 Championship. Happy Siren, Hector Garzo, Dinas Eki on the front row of the grid, and uh, we should expect the order to change around a bit as well. Yeah, and I'm just seeing down here on pit lane. I just saw Carmelo Morales. It's great to see Carmelo here, <laughs> and uh, I, lo I loved him. You know, commentating last year too for for his superbike races. Such a talented rider. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't even, what's funny about him, he doesn't even look like a rider, but he, he's one of the fastest riders in the world, you know, <laughs> on, a, on a big superbike. And uh, unfortunately, we won't see him this weekend because he's racing, you know, this, there's no more superbike class here. Uh, it's now in the Spanish Championship. Yep. And, uh, and I think he's actually running, I think he finished second in both of the other races. And uh, he's actually got a really strong competitor from Chile. Yeah. Uh, that's that's won the both races out there. So, uh, but it's good to see him here. I think he's helping out a little bit the, the team. Makes uh, you wonder if he'll ever retire, doesn't it, Carmelo? Because he's, yeah, he's not, not the youngest rider. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. These riders never want to retire. <laughs> Look at Valentino, 38 years old, leading the championship. Who would say that? Well, it's funny you should say that because the, uh, the oldest rider who uh, will be competing or was competing in the Moto2 class in the Stock 600 class, because there are two Stock 600 entries in Moto2, uh, was 59 years old, Philippe Legallo. 
Great. The Frenchman. Unbelievable. 59 years. If I'm able to raise a smile, let alone a leg <laughs> over a motorcycle at 59 years old, I'll be quite impressed with that. Maybe he's just telling the, his wife, hey, I'm just going to go out with the boys and have some fun. <laughs> just go for a nice Sunday drive, yeah. darling. That's it. <laughs> so there we are. The grid lines up here at Albacete. 20 laps await the European Moto2 riders. And there is the man on pole position, Hapish Sirin from Malaysia, the number 55. Not the same bike he races in the World Championship, this no. one. Slightly different. Different. We'll talk more about that later, but it's going to be interesting to see who will get the drag down towards turn one. Your front row again, Happy Sirin, Hector Garzo, and Demas Eki. He'll also have the less pressure out of everyone because I'm sure he won't do the whole championship. Yes, indeed. The green flag then is waved at the back. The five red lights come on and they go away now. European Moto 2 in 2017 is going. Looks like it was a good start from Hector. Sirin, but Hector Garzo got a great getaway as well as we lead the way down in towards turn one. Who's going to lead it? It's going to be Sirin from oh. Garzo. So brilliantly close as well in the middle of the pack. Was that one of the AGR bikes up there? Or was that perhaps Odendal? Looks like it was very close. It's Steven Secchi in third place. Granado is into fourth, and Odendal's only the fifth place off the start as well. Was Joe going a little deep in turn one? Yes, indeed. So, Happy Siren leads the way. He's got a couple of tenths of a second. In the second place at the moment is still Hexigars, though. The Spaniard, he's looking great out there so far on circuit as the riders come through onto that mini back straight. Of course, these uh, machines are that much quicker, so it won't uh, have that much of an effect with the slipstream. But uh, Dina Seki, the Indonesian rider in second, in third place. Of course, fourth in the European Moto2 Championship last year. Keep an eye out for him. But I'm very impressed with Dimas Eki holding that position off the start there. Yeah, uh, Dimas had a great start too, but Hector had a, a little like he had a good jump start. Like, not a jump start, but a good jump out of the start. And uh, I think he's going to make. Oh, oh, somebody's gone down. That's David Sanchez. Sanchez. That's a real big shame there for Sanchez. He started a bit of a way down the order, and his race will go no further than the opening lap. Here's a replay. Let's see what happened for Sanchez. Oh, oh, dear. That was a nasty high side, wasn't it? It looked like he... Uh it looked like he may have put false neutral and then put the gear in because it, it high sided it. That was a really weird place to high side as well. Into the corner, not mm. even outside of the corner. So, uh, very strange. Indeed, yeah. Happy Sirin then leads the way over the tiny line for the first lap to be completed here in Albacete. Hector Garzo in second place. Dimas Eki, who said before this weekend that he wanted to challenge for the championship and take his first podium position well on lap two out of 20. He's in a prime position for that. Meanwhile, Stephen Odendahl, as Eki gets all out fourth. of shape, is in fourth place. That's a great start there. We were a bit worried if he wasn't going to get a good start. Yeah, the, he, he needs to get a move on and try to pass Dimas and Hector as quick as possible because he doesn't want to let, you know, Siren get away. And because Siren's already got like a point, you know, he's already got a second gap. He has indeed, yeah. So two laps out of 20, we're on lap two with Siren leading the way. There he is, the Patronus machine, the number 55, the Malaysian rider sliding his way into that corner. It's so interesting to know the different riding styles on these Moto2 bikes as well. Yeah, the Moto2, look at how it's amazing during the years how much everyone's leaning more and more the bike you know now you see people touching elbows and shoulders and on the ground and people are asking me how is it possible <laughs> and it's like it's basically grip they have so much grip these bikes and uh, it's incredible how much lean angle you can actually carry it really is hector garzo there in second place the number 14 so it's the top three actually who have stayed where they qualified so siren garzo and eki that's really impressive actually as well no change in the yeah, top three i'm surprised uh, steven ain't you know it seems like he's struggling to pass uh, a little bit of Granado. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, actually, actually Gra yeah. Yeah, Granado's, Granado's actually passed him, so uh, I'm not sure if he made a mistake, but we'll s and Joe Roberts is running in eighth in the back of that group. Well, that's great. He was, uh, where was he this morning in warm-up? He was inside the top yeah, 10, he was he, as well? Yeah, I think he was in like sixth or something this morning, not, but he had a good feeling with the bike, but the conditions weren't the best. And they only got, what, 15 minutes of warm-up. So yeah, you can't really count that. Indeed, it was actually in fourth place was uh, Roberts this oh, morning warm-up. So that's go, really so. impressive. Meanwhile, his teammate Uribe uh, in the All-American oh. lineup for ADR was... Uh, 
13th as well. So that's okay. a good start for both of those riders. Eki now in third place. Keep an eye out for Granado there with the fluorescent yellow helmet. He's in fourth, being chased down by Stephen Odendahl, the reigning European Championship. Don't forget, new bike and new team for him this year. He's on the NTS chassis that uh, Alan Tesher did so well on last year. And they're hoping, I believe, to bring that uh, chassis up to the World Championship stage before too long. So Garza is actually Hector's own, the only one really to match uh, Cyrene's lap time with the 33. Uh, the rest of the field are basically on 34s, so 33-8 uh, is actually what Hector just did. Uh, be interesting to see if he can, well, how much quicker they go from that lap time. Um, I'm sure they'll go a lot quicker, maybe a couple seconds, but uh, here's Joe trying to get by. Um, to Marcel Brenner. Brenner. Yeah, Marcel Brenner is trying to get himself ahead of. Can't quite find the way through at the moment. Meanwhile, the top two have kind of broken away of uh, Siren and Garzo at the moment. They're sort of leaving Eki uh, a little bit uh, for Derek at the moment. As Odendahl, uh, sorry, Odendahl, I should say, that's the AGR bike of uh, Roberts, rather. It's difficult to distinguish it to. I'm so yeah, used to I'm saying... so confused, yeah. <laughs> so used to saying Odendahl's on the AGR team. Of course, who he was with for so many years as well. But there is Hector Garzo in second position as the bikes come streaming over the timing line into that first, second and third corner. He's riding really good, actually. I mean, surprisingly, he's really fast. He's already in the back of, uh, of Cyrene, which who had a second gap from him about two laps ago. So, and he just did the fastest lap time of the race, 33-1 again, uh, low 33s, and uh, the rest of the fields are on high 33s. So, uh, indeed, yeah. Well, Hector Garza, of course, has uh, made that step up as well this year, hasn't he? From the uh, Moto2 Championship into the U European Moto2 right. Championship as well. So that's a really impressive feat considering it's probably his first uh, leg over on the uh, Moto2 bike for this year. Sometimes you'll see people um, struggle in Moto3 and then they jump on the Moto2 bike and they'll actually be really quick or a lot quicker than what they were in Moto3. Example in the World Championship is Fabio Quartaro. You know, the Frenchman, he, he was super fast in, in 125 when he was racing the Spanish Championship back in the day. Then he went up to Moto3, struggled a bit, started becoming a big, you know, as a kid. And then now he's in Moto2 and he's finishing top eight, yeah, which yeah. is incredible. Absolutely, yeah, battling for the podium is Hector Garzo. And now closing up on the back of Sire in as well. Let's have a look at the lap times last time around. And Garzo was quicker, mm -hmm. four tenths of a second. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like I said, he gained that one second gap that he, he had behind Sire in, which is really good. That's indeed the pit board out for Siren, telling him to push, 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 as we can see from his uh, his uh, mechanic there as well. So Garzo in second place, Eki in third place, Odendahl into P5. He won't be happy with that, of course. And uh, this time, uh, last this uh, last season, he took a second position in the opening round, although it was, of course, at Valencia. But he won here last time in Albacete. He just went by... Uh, is that Granado? Yeah, he just went by Granado, I think. And... Uh... It, yeah, the problem is when you, this track's really tough to pass. Uh, it's it's a small track, so sometimes what happens is you get stuck behind a rider, and once you get stuck behind a rider, it's hard to, to go by them, and then what happens is you lose that gap with the front group. And uh, actually, I just made a mistake. Uh, he did not pass on it now. Uh, not on now. Uh, Granado. Yeah, Odenal actually has shuffled back a bit, uh, and Granado's actually caught Eki right now. So Ek Granado seems to be uh, doing quick. Yeah, Granado's the only one with a similar lap time as the front two, with the 33-2, 33-1 from Hector. So uh, I think he might have a chance of uh, catching the front two if he, uh, if he can get by Eki soon. Yeah, indeed. Five laps out of 20 completed here in Albacete into that turn 12 chicane where we saw so many passes taking place in the European Talent Cup. And of course, after this, we've got the Moto3 race with a 45 rider grid. So keep an eye out for that. That's going to be very interesting and pretty hairy, I'm sure, into that corner. Siren leads the way, two tenths of a second ahead of Garzo over the timing line. Eki, third position. Granado closing that gap now as well, trying to get himself up into the podium. And Odendahl now has actually dropped back into the uh, clutches of Brenner by the looks of things. Yeah, Marcel Brenner there on the right, number 46, is closing right up. So it's NTS versus Kalex chassis in this respect as well. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with uh, Odendahl because uh, he had a really good feeling, he said, in the dry. Uh, and he said that he he had a good feeling and thought he could run in the, you know, in the front. So... He might be having some issues, you never know. Um, but these two right here are, are having a good good portion and they're actually the only riders on, on a 33 flat right now. 
And uh, and Eric also, I mean, Eric is not too too far off their lap times. The problem is he's stuck. You know, he's stuck behind that Eki and he needs to get by him soon if he wants to try to win the race. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it, here, he's trying, you see, like I said, it's tough, this track, especially on a Moto2 bike. It's really tough to pass. And uh, there's not a lot of areas, of braking areas where you can pass. Yeah, absolutely. We can really see that now as Granado trying to hang it out. And uh, really interesting to see Granado on that motorcycle as well. Look how much he hangs off it compared to Eki as well. They've both got very distinguished riding styles as they head into this turn 12 chicane. And uh, Granado really hanging off of his uh, Calix. Looking great out there so far on track for the promo racing team. Uh, the team, of course, uh, that he uh, did compete with last year in the European Moto2 Championship. So he's in a familiar surrounding, unlike, of course, Odendal, who's in a brand new team, brand new surroundings, brand new bike, brand new everything pretty much. And is now sitting in fifth position for Odendal. So Siren leads the way. Siren seems to get a little gap right now. He's got a point three gap from uh, Hector. Um, and then we got Eric doing the same lap time as basically Garzo. Garzo, yeah. what a name. Hector Garzo. It's, uh, it's, I'm not Garzo. sure. It, it, it sounds Mexican, doesn't it? Yeah, the name, it does. Doesn't it? it doesn't sound Spanish. No, it's not a particularly Spanish sounding name, but there we are. I mean, uh, Eric, um, Eric Bernardo, I should say, of course, he's uh, a Brazilian, Brazilian. Yeah, yep. yeah, exactly. So uh, there's quite a few sort of different different names, and Odendal, the oh, only South African, is trying to get right on the rear end of oh, Eki. There, there we go. Yeah, forces uh, him into a mistake, Good forces pass. to go wide. Well, that was a brilliant bit of overtaking there from Eric Bernardo. So now down into the podium. Now he needs to get you know keep his head down and try to try to gain that gap back from uh, you know Gar Gartho indeed yeah we know we've got a, a quite a few uh, Indonesian followers who love watching uh, the Indonesian rider Dima Seki and of course uh, the Asian riders that are in the uh, the Moto3 Junior World Championship of course as well and uh, Dima Seki now into fourth place which would be a great result for Eki as well just to have a look back and see where he finished best result last season so this would be easily his best result uh, of the season compared to uh, 2016 his best result last year with two good places so oh that'd be you know and uh, here's where you can tell where you know look huh, Siren just made a 32 you know 32 now he's in the 32s and uh, he's the only rider on a 32 9 and uh, this is where you can tell a motor, you know world championship rider mm. who can keep a really strong pace for all 20 laps and uh, and like I said to Joe you know learn from him learn from his riding and, and have it if you have a chance follow him on track and because uh, he is a really fast rider and he's actually been I've seen him in the top 10 recently and uh, and now he's riding here in the uh, in the Spanish championship for practice and uh, it's great to see great to see him here oh look at that front chatter <laughs> oh Oh, I'll tell you what, a bike I want to watch to see front chatter is the Transformers machine as oh. well. Because that thing chatters like there is no tomorrow, being ridden this year by uh, Greg Black and Thomas Sigvartsen. So if we do get a close-up of that machine, because that's uh, it's a very unique design and it doesn't have normal front forks, does it? it has, yeah, I saw that. I think last year, uh, Ricky Carduce was running it mm. in the Spanish over here. And uh, he was telling me that... <laughs> The only thing good about it is you can break really, really deep, and that's it. He says the rest is it's it needs time and and it's struggling, yeah. uh, which is normal, you know. Brand new bike, it ain't gonna be in the top of the of the field right away. So, uh, but it's good. it's great to see different types of bike out there, mm. not always the same. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's not just uh, just Calyxes. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we do see a few different manufacturers. It's great to see other manufacturers having a go as well, such as the uh, Transformers outfit and likewise the uh, NTS team. And we've also got a Tech 3 chassis, which is what Hector Garza is on, I believe, as well. So that's really impressive for Garza if he's on a Tech 3. Tech chassis. 3 don't don't run too bad. Um, you know, last year, Petra, and uh, I think last year, two years ago, also... Uh, Vierge, Xavier Vierge, 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 who, Vierge, yeah, Vierge, yeah. Vierge, who's now in the World Championship for Tech 3. Mm. Um, they were always in the top three, mm. top four, top five. So it's not a bad bike. Now Remy Gardner, a really good friend of mine, Remy Gardner, who's running in the World Championship in Tech 3. I was asking him because he ran a Calyx in 2000, last year, 2016, yeah. and now he's in the, the, in the, um, the Tech 3 bike. And uh, I said, how is that bike? He says, it's not bad. It's not too far off. They just need more time on it. Meanwhile, there's a great battle going on between Marcel Brenner and Augusto Fernandez. Fernandez in the Easy Race Moto 2 team. Brenner on the number 46. He is in the H. 
uh, 43 team, the Hernandez outfit. And he's currently sitting just ahead of Fernandez at the moment. This is incredibly close between those two. Joe, yeah, Joe seems to be struggling. Or something's wrong because he's uh, he did a 34-2 the last lap, and uh, he's actually lost that gap to seventh place. Mm. My apologies, actually, it's, it's uh, Fernandez rather ahead of Brunner, I should say, at the moment. So Fernandez on that black Suter chassis, which I believe, indeed, it is the only Suter in the field. Doing a good job there, actually, it's battling for sixth position as well, because uh, we know that that Suter uh, is perhaps not as easy to set up in the difficult conditions that we've had this weekend. No, especially it's the only Suter out there right now, and there's not many left anywhere. Uh, uh, there's all Calyxes now, or Tech 3 bikes, and... Uh, me running a suitor in 2014, uh, I could say that it wasn't a bad, as bad as a bike, you know, that year. It wasn't too bad. Mm. Uh, the problem was we were running Michelin, so everything was different. Now with Dunlop, I think it's made it better. Yeah. Uh, but the main issue always said about the suitor is always front chatter. Everyone yeah. was always complaining about having too much front chatter on that suitor, and Calyx always seemed to not have that bad. Yeah, and just for those who are perhaps new to motorcycle racing, they've never watched uh, CV before, what is front chatter? What, tell us Basically, what it's You'll see it in some of the corners is where you see that front end basically, ch I don't know how you would say it, chattering. So just bouncing up and down. Yeah, yeah, but really fast. And it's a really bad feeling because basically you, you feel like you're going to lose the front any time because the, the front's just, you know, wobbling in all the way into the corner. And it's a lot easier to lose the front that way. Mm. And the deeper you break, the more increasement of uh, chattering you get. So it's always that fine line where the team was trying to make me use the rear brake before putting the front brake on, you know, breaking into the corners to try to settle the bike from the back to the front, which helped, but that means you have to change your riding it's stuff. Such a major right? thing, yeah. So it's not just riding the bike. There's a million things you have to do uh, that you have to do riding a bike like that and changing your riding style. Here's Ondenal trying to get through. He's ahead of Eki now, so he's into fourth place. Is Ondenal? Will Eki fight back as they come through the first corner? He looks Ooh. like he did. Yes, Eki cuts his nose off. So Eki holds on to fourth place. Ondenal, the reigning champion, is in P5 at the moment. Lap 11 out of 29 remaining here in Albacete. Very close between these two. They're really very close on the circuit. And their last lap times as well were separated very closely. But Odendahl was quicker by three tenths of a second compared to Eki as well. So he really closed the gap on that last lap in the spell of the fourth. Like I said, it's not an easy place to pass. And now Odendahl's kind of getting a little frustrated. It's easy to get frustrated as a rider to to try to pass someone when you can't really when you can't in a racetrack like here's Here the goes. same move yeah up the inside elbow down i love odendahl's riding style it's so unique in the way that he just hangs so far off that motorcycle and he moves himself up into fourth position does the reigning champion and now his next target will be the brazilian eric granado it'd be interesting to see if you can catch him i mean out of all the riders i think odendahl is one of the best you know, best in, out there, and uh, I think he is one of the only ones that is capable to, you know, focus and and start doing fast lap times and catch uh, catch Granado. That's uh, right now he's running about one one point one seconds ahead of him. Yeah, indeed. So a bit of a gap to make up there for Stephen Odendahl to come on to the start finish straight and over the timing line once again. Siren now has gapped Garzo, so Garzo sits in second place, 1.7 seconds behind, and now Granado's kind of in a race all in his own, really, isn't he, in third position? He's just kind of lapping there consistently and comfortably. But now he's in a good position, he's in that podium. How difficult is it to lose that concentration when you're just out there riding on your own? It's very difficult, especially when you have a signboard that says one second on the null behind you, <laughs> you know? If you know that guy's behind you, you know you gotta keep your toes, you know, you gotta keep it on the toes, and. I'm actually surprised, you know, Garzo is actually doing really good lap times. He's, he's not, he's only running one tenth or the same lap time as Cyrene, and who's only 1.7 seconds ahead. So don't think that that battle's over just yet. Anything could happen. But um, I love Odenal, how much he backs it in those those corners are. It's really a very Oh, there's another time. pass into that. Yeah, indeed. Tor Eki, uh, turn, turn eight. Yeah, indeed. Eki moves down a position. So Eki now into uh, P6, I believe. Yes, indeed. So Augusto Fernandez moves himself up ahead. And that's a really impressive ride from Augusto Fernandez as well. I mean, considering where he was uh, last season as well. And uh, Fernandez. Here's that pass. Was uh, P5. You open that little gap and 
Oh, him up, so impressive. He? Yeah, that was a really nice move though from uh, Augusto Fernandez. Got himself up the inside. Certainly showed that he's uh, not going to be messed with this year with the Spaniards. No, I mean, uh, and that's the second pass Dave he's made in that corner. So I think he's not going to let that gap open anymore in that corner anymore. Yes, indeed. So lap 30 out of 20 here at the Albacete circuit. It's round one of the European Moto2 Championship. Steven Odendahl, the reigning champion, currently sits in P4. The nearest rider ahead of him is Eric Granado. There he is, the number 51 with the fluorescent yellow helmet. He's got a very distinguishable livery on his uh, persona, shall we say. Yeah, Granado just did a 34-0 this last lap, and Odendahl just did a 33-6. So he just gained 0.4 of a second in just one lap. Odendahl has got the hammer down, as he uh, likes to he say, full gas 44 for There him. you go, and uh, that, he wants that podium as bad as uh, Granado, so it'll be good to, good, good to see if he can. Him. I'm sure he will in seven laps to go, so uh, it's going to be another good battle for the place for that podium spot. Indeed. Interesting to note he's not running the number one this year as well, despite being the reigning champion. Yeah, I mean, it is a, a choice of the rider. I know a lot of riders don't like running the number one. Ex um, superstitions <laughs> or, you know, us riders have so many superstitions, so uh, it could be that. But uh, maybe he just wanted to stick with 44, his, his number from... From, from forever, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. But we all know that he is number one, and that's what he was saying. <laughs> this is it. Now it's really, uh, really good to chat to him uh, in the pit lane this morning. Stephen Odendahl said that, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Dakota, the front end of that bike is brilliant. He said it's just rear grip where they need to work on. Really, that's that's their issue at the moment. Yeah, that's what he was saying. He said the front end was was really good. He didn't need to work on the rear, but. He did say they had a new chassis to try out. They haven't tried it out yet, so who knows if that chassis might help that rear grip that they need. Uh, I'm not sure if they've used it in this race, uh, but it'll be interesting to see during the season if he's improved uh, or if he improves uh, improves and, and wins and beats Cyrene. I'm not sure how many more races Cyrene's gonna be doing this year. I'm not sure if he can do all of them because of the MotoGP uh, World Championship schedule, uh, but it's great to see someone from the World Championship out here and. Truly, you see how much level World Championship has. Absolutely, Hafez Sayarin looking to take his uh, first win as a plastic bag rolls across the track. <laughs> there we are. Somebody's been to uh, Murphy Dollar or something like that, haven't they? <laughs> there we go. Hafez Sayarin leads the way, the number 55. A great uh, race for the Malaysian. Six laps remaining, or five and a half now, should we say. And he is comfortably ahead by over 3.7 seconds ahead of Hector Garzo. Another point four. Uh, on the now just got from Granado, so he's bay he's slowly reeling him in, and uh, I know uh, as a rider Granado's getting that signboard, <laughs> and it's going lower and lower, and he's going no 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 stay away. Yeah, you can see how close they are actually. Just in the background of the shot we saw there, so Odendahl really has got the magnet. Can I just say now? something? Garza is running a great race. You know, he's just, he's all alone right now, but I mean he's he ain't too far off the pace. He's the only one really running really comfortable mid-33s. Um, Siren is in low 33s, but, um, and Granado is running high 33s with uh, Ondenal running mid-33s too. So uh, it's great to see Garzo up there in the front this year. Uh, it seems like he feels more comfortable on the bike. Not sure, what, did he, what did he last year? Uh, he raced uh, in the Moto2 Championship. Uh, okay. Sorry, no, apologies. No, Moto3 production class. Actually, so last year, so he's actually done. He's actually a really talented Moto2 rider. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really impressive feat for uh, for Hector Garzo. Um, really impressive change over to the Moto2 yeah. machine because there's such a big difference between these Moto3 and Moto2 bikes, isn't there? Totally. Because I actually got the chance to to try out a Moto World Championship Moto3 bike in Aragon mm. last year, and obviously I was w I was. Not overweight, I was basically the weight to be on a Moto2 bike. Yeah. So when I got on a Moto3 bike, the thing felt so slow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it felt so slow and just like needed more power. I'm like, where's the power on this thing? And it's true, it's all about corner speed and braking. And and uh, and then I was like, yeah, I want to go back on this Moto2 bike. Yeah. So <laughs> most kids that go from Moto3 to Moto2 do not want to go back down to Moto3. No, I can well imagine. Steven Odenau, it looks like he's going to try and take Augusto Fernandez with him as well. That's going to be a very impressive feat for Fernandez as well. Oh, yeah. If Fernandez can get a toe from Odenau, it would be great. And it would be really smart for him because... Uh, He's going to have Odenau do all the work. <laughs>
Indeed, yeah, Fernandez actually finished uh, in fifth position in the championship last year as well. It was a very impressive feat. Meanwhile, Granado, the Brazilian rider, holding on to that final podium position with his Calix machine. Of course, all of these riders using the Honda CBR 600 RR engine. Another point three. Indeed, yeah, Odadal really piling the pressure on to Granada. Point now. six behind now. It's only a matter of time, isn't so, it? So, yeah, not it. five laps to go. So, I mean, and the last five, you know, five tenths, it, the closer you get, the faster you're going to get closer to him. So, um, it's going to be a good battle for that podium for the last few laps now with, uh, you know, Granado on the now and Fernandez. Mm. Absolutely, yeah, there is Hector Garzo, the man in second place. What a race he's ridden. And there are his team. Of course, they look pretty calm and collected at the moment, don't they? I would imagine they would Very do Very lonely well. race. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, another man who's in a lonely race is this man here, the leader, Hafiz. See that front chatter? I'm, I was just explaining, you know, earlier. You'll see it into that turn eight right there. Is the front, you'll see it bounce around really quick. That's that front chatter. And uh, even Calixes get it. I mean, most bikes get it. You'll even see Mark Marquez on that MotoGP bike. He'll get it, and and it's not a great feeling because even your your arms kind of like get tired of it. Mm. Uh, not saying like motocross, but uh, a similar feeling. But I mean, it's what cost Valentino Rossi the uh, championship of 2006, or so he says, of course. When uh, when you look at uh, what he said, it was chatter on the bike, but it was rear chatter, not front chatter. No, so we also get rear chatter. Yeah, and uh, all types of chatter. Yeah, uh, the problem is, you know, these guys are doing such fast lap times and. They're, they're always on the limit. And when you're on the limit, you try to find that fine line of trying to get less chatter here, more, you know, more grip here and, and help. Oh, then I was just going to try to pass Granado into Here turn are, one. Down the straight into the first corner. Odendal breaks late. The back end comes out. He moves up the inside. Odendal into the podium position here at Albacete. A fantastic overtake there from the reigning champion. Will Granado fight back? Will Fernandez get involved in this as well? And now three way battle for third in the closing stages of this race with Odendal at the helm at the moment. And Fernandez looking very close there on the black suitor machine, trying to find his way through. And what's impressive about this, Dakota, three different chassis, three different riders, and uh, a very, very impressive battle, all interlocks in as one. This is great. This is great to see. You know, that just shows you how now Calix is not just the leading chassis out there. Uh, you could have any, you know, type and it works. So there's no excuses. And... Uh, It'll be interesting to see if Granado can stay with on the in these few laps. And uh, if if you see he's struggling, then Fernandez better, you know, try to pass him because it's gonna be a hard gap to 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 get back if Odenal creates one. Yes indeed. So Odendal sits in third place, but the two, the three riders I should say, all so close together. You can only really see one as they go on to that back straight, into that right hander. It's a very long sweeping right hander that one before they head into this turn twelve and thirteen. That's uh, Chicane, very, very close it is between them. Just a couple of hundredths of a second separating them. But it'll be interesting to see the difference in lap times as well. And although the slipstream isn't quite as effective in the Moto2 bikes as it is on the Moto3 machines, it is certainly going to help out quite a lot with Fernandez as they come down the straight. I think Fernandez is going to try to pass here because uh, Granado seems to... I mean, I'm not saying he's not as quick, but he seems to be struggling to stay right behind Odenau's wheel. So it'll be interesting to see if Fernandez now can get right back behind him and Granado can basically turn himself with him. Indeed, yeah, and as uh, Augusto Fernandez, who finished fifth in the championship last year, moves himself up into fourth, Granado now down into P5 in this race, and Fernandez really is on a mission, isn't he? He's closed right up onto the back of Steven Odendahl. He's like a complete different rider from the beginning of the race. Yeah, absolutely. He's found some extra grip or something, but uh, it's great to see this, and uh, <laughs> Odendahl doesn't have that third position quite yet. Steven Odendahl, the reigning European champion oh. with Fernandez up the inside. Did Fernandez make it through to that yep. corner? Yes, he did. So Fernandez moves on to the podium. Brilliant result from the Suter rider racing with the Easy Race Moto2 team and the MTS chassis. Steven Odendahl moves down into P4. A great battle going on between these two. And now, of course, if these two do end up coming to blows, it'll be Christmas come early for Granado. No, 100%. Uh, Granado seems to be, you know, struggling to c try to stay with them. Uh, he's backing in a lot more than, than these two in the front here. And uh, But it's great to see Fernandez back up there. And uh, he's actually running quite fast. And <laughs> actually, he might pull away a little bit. Indeed, yeah. He's only 20 years old, is Augusto Fernandez. In fact, 19 years old, I apologize. Same year that I was born. Really? There we go, you see. 
Siren leads the way, 4.6 seconds. Garzo in second place, Fernandez in third. Fernandez is actually running quicker than Siren in first place right now. That's very impressive indeed. He just did a 33-2 and Siren's in a 33-3. And then Garzo in second is doing high 33, 33-9, the same lap time as Olden now. So Fernandez running the same lap times as Siren in, uh, with two laps to go, so something up his sleeve. <laughs> Absolutely. So Augusto Fernandez with Steven Odenal chasing him down for the final podium position. We just saw Hector Garzo in the forefront of your shot there on the blue and white number 14 machine. You can eye out for him. He's going to finish the race in second place if it all goes as planned. But who is going to get the battle for third place? It's between Augusto Fernandez and Steven Odendahl. And Fernandez is really strong in that middle sector. This is where he's making up all that time. Yeah, and... Uh... Renato, we've lost him a bit, and now he's up one second behind Odenal, but Odenal's not going to give up. You know, he's Moto2 champion from last year. He, he's, he wants it as bad as anyone, and uh, he wants to keep that number one number. Not on his plate, but uh, he wants to keep that number one spot for the championship this year. So Indeed, if Odenal did take the championship, he'd be the first double Moto2 European champion since Jordi Torres in 2011 and 2012. So that would be a very impressive feat. Meanwhile, Hafish Siren comes over the timing line to start the final lap of racing here in Albacete. The Malaysian rider has led from start to finish. He's looked calm and comfortable. Second place of Hector Garzo on the number 14 machine. But who's going to get third? Here comes Odendahl up the inside into the first corner. Brilliant piece of overtaking there from Stephen Odendahl. Will he make it stick? It's very close between the two. Into the left we go. Augusto Fernandez has to hold on for fourth place at the moment. Turn uh, four here. He's going to try to... Uh, he's too far back, so... Um, he needs to try to get right behind him and try to make the same move into Odenal in turn eight, but I don't. I think Odenal is going to be smart and shut that door. Well, you don't become a reigning uh, European champion for nothing, that's for sure. And Odenal really knows his race craft. Of course, his race at the world level in 2013 came back to the European Championship for the following year and also races oh, in South Africa as well. Oh, this is going to be very close indeed as they come down into that turn eight corner. Holds on, does Odenal very close between door. them though. Here no. he goes. No, he's going to go the inside. Fernandez. Yes, he does. Fernandez moves into third place on the final lap. Augusto. Fernandez, what a ride from the Sousa chassis machine, what a ride from the Spaniard as well, and will Odendahl be able to fight back, or is it going to be too little, too late? He's got to get a good oh, gets a little bit out of the seat back here, but he needs to get right behind his wheel out of this corner No, runs way too wide, he's he's I uh, he can't get it, he won't get it, and uh, the problem is, he's, Fernandez is really strong on the break, so and like I said, if you're not in the front in turn 13, it's going to be hard to hear Siren. Great Here comes Siren. Hafis Siren wins the first race of the European Moto2 Championship in 2017. Hector Garzo comes home in second place. Here is Fernandez. Fernandez. Augusto Fernandez takes his first podium of the 2017 season. Steven Odendahl has to settle for fourth place. Fifth place was Eric Granado. A great result for the Indonesian rider Dimas Eki in sixth position as well. Marcel Brenner comes home in seventh place. And the American Joe Rock. Roberts is home in eighth place as well as Fellini and Jason Uribe round out the top ten. What a race we had there, and you can see how happy Hafiz Siren is with that. Oh, great race, and uh, it's good to see, you know... <laughs> Hello, what's he doing? Some kind of a celebration <laughs> there, are kissing the tarmac of Albacete, Hafiz Siren. What a race, waves to the fans as well. A really good attendance we've got here at Albacete this weekend as well. Hector Garzo, though, what a ride, what a race. No, great, and like I was just about to say, it's great to see Garza and Fernandez, two new riders up in that podium spot, you know, and uh, it's great to see these battles and it was a great battle for third place too for that podium and Fernandez as well you know well deserves it absolutely so Hector Garzo comes home in second place his best result in the 2017 championship a brand new rider in the 2017 championship as well which makes it all the more impressive on that Tech Twa machine so 20 laps for the European Moto2 Championship here at Albacete. Final runners and riders coming home over the timing line. The uh, only Briton, Jamie Edwards, was home in 18th position. Let's have a look at the final classification in just a few moments' time. But a great race there as Hafish Siren takes the chequered flag. Augusto Fernandez, what a race from him, the number 37. He came home in uh, 
third position. And you can see how delighted he is on board that Suter chassis as well, wheeling his way down the back straight, and quite understandably so, and waving to the crowd as well. What a race we had in Moto2. What a final lap for that third place battle as well. We thank you so much for joining us for that. That was really something incredible and a great result, as I mentioned earlier on, for Di Mazzecchi in sixth position as the riders complete their cooling down lap. They'll head into Park Ferme, of course, and we'll hear from the winner, Hafish Sirin, very shortly with Dakota as well. So there we are. Lovely conditions here in Albacete today. The first dry day we've had all weekend. The wind is still quite strong. It's blowing um, in a westerly direction over the start-finish straight, which certainly doesn't help the lighter machines. Here is the final confirmation of the results. Hafish Sirin takes the checkered flag after 31 minutes and 13 seconds. Hector Garzo in second place, five seconds down the road. Fernandez in third, Odendahl fourth, Granado fifth, Eki sixth, Brenner seventh, Joe Roberts, the American, uh, the first American home on board that Calix in eighth place. Jason Uribe rounds out the top ten. Lucas Tolovic made a great start because he started right from the back of the grid. Hiroki Ono is 12th place. Oscar Gutierrez in 13th. Connor Luce, Mikovka, Derland, Luna and Jamie Edwards was two laps down on that Nikos machine. A great result there for the Britain. A fantastic race we saw there in uh, the Moto2 Championship. And there is Happy Sirin in Park Ferme being congratulated by his team manager. And you can understand exactly why he is so pleased. And we'll be hearing from him, as I said, in just a couple of moments' time. Of course, we've got the Moto3 race on the way next, the Junior Moto3 World Championship. We're very much looking forward to that as Sirin celebrates in style. Let's see if we can hear anything in Park Ferme. Nothing too much. A matter of silence for the moment. I'm sure it'll all be in uh, his native language as well. But what a race it was from the Indonesian, of course, racing in the World Championship. And he is looking uh, like he'll be in good stead and getting some all-important testing miles on board his machine. A great race also for Hector Garzo on board that Tech 3 bike. He's very pleased with that, as you can see. Second place in that race for the Spaniard. And a few words being exchanged with his team manager in Park Ferme as well. And Hector Garzo finishing that race in a brilliant, brilliant position. And don't forget, of course, about Augusto Fernandez as well. We're looking forward to hearing from him at uh, some point soon and seeing his celebration on the podium. A great result for Augusto Fernandez. There he is, the number 37, the Spaniard on that suitor. So three different manufacturers of chassis on the podium as well. Calex, Tech 3 and Suta. The first time we've seen that in 2017 and what a great way to start the 2017 European Moto2 Championship. Just trying to get his hat on as well. Is he going to get it over that hair? That's what I'm wondering as well. That's going to be very interesting to find out. There we go. And a few selfies taking place in the paddock. Here was the battle for third place that went right down to the line then between Augusto Fernandez and Steven Odendahl. Odendahl went into the corner but ran it a little bit wide. That left just enough room for Fernandez as Odendahl had to sit up mid-corner. Fernandez moved himself up into the podium position and Odendahl couldn't retaliate from there. But how interesting was that? A very very hardly fought battle and you can see just what it means to Augusto Fernandez as well. So the sun shines over here in Albacete, a brilliant race in the European Moto2 Championship. A fantastic result for all involved. Some great races going on as well. Some great battles going on throughout the field. Very impressed with Lucas Tolovic finishing just outside the top 10 after coming back from uh, about 23rd on the grid or something like that. That's a very impressive sign. Let's hear from Hafish Sirin. This, this side of the paddock now and uh, great race. It's been raining the last four days. So finally you have some sunshine and uh, great way to start the season. Yeah, uh, first I would like to thank to the team because uh, I don't know this uh, race, you know. And then the team, when just uh, landed from the Austin race, the team say, hey, you want more training for this weekend? Well, what training, I ask. And then they say, race in Abacete. I say, well, I don't know. Depends on you. And we just uh, keep training. And then uh, in, the, in the last minute preparation, everything. So I'm very happy with the team work. And... Uh, we are also confident in the rain last two days and yesterday we make a good uh, in the rain and then uh, dry in the warm up so we try to find some setup but in the race was a li little bit uh, difficult in the beginning it's a bit uh, spinning and then uh, we try to control the tire and try to understand so it's good for me to keep this momentum for next race in world championship in moto 2 thank you
Well, there we are, half a siren, understandably delighted with that result. We'll get highlights for you in just a few moments' time. But uh, siren, what a great race it was for the Malaysian rider taking that knowledge into the World Championship. Here we are then, this was the start of the race. Happy Sirin started his way on pole position. Alongside him was Hector Garzo, and Sirin looked like he would lead down towards the first corner, which indeed he did do. He took the whole shot, and then was pretty much untouchable, really, for the rest of the race. Further back on, it was all going off as well. Some great battles throughout the field. Dinaseki slipped back from his front row start. He got touched by Odendal, or overtaken by Odendal in the opening stages of the race, who made his way through. Eki would eventually go on to finish that race in sixth position. Some very exciting racing as Eki then lost out to Augusto Fernandez as well as Fernandez made his way up the order. That was a great race from the Spaniard as well. That's a fantastic riding that went on throughout the field as they came over the timing line, however. There was a nice little battle going on between Steven Odendahl and Eric Granado. Granado at the outside line. Odendahl made his way up the inside of the Brazilian rider. We thought these two would be battling for the championship so far this year. It's not turned out to be quite that way at the moment. A great race that went on between both riders as Fernandez found his way against Granado as well. So Fernandez, a great performance. Meanwhile, then it was a battle for third place between Granado, uh, sorry, between Fernandez and Odendahl. Odendahl had the advantage as they went into the last few laps. Looked pretty calm and pretty confident out there. But then it would all come down to the final lap and a final overtaking spot as Augusto Fernandez managed to muscle his way up the inside, sat up Odendahl momentarily. And that led him to the podium position as Hafish Sirin came home to take the chequered flag and 25 points in the European Moto2 Championship. Something that he was understandably delighted with. So that brings an end, the Moto2 race. Up next, we've got Moto3 and 45 riders on the grid for that one there, Dakota. That's going to be something exciting. There we are, riders just taking their way onto the podium now. It was great to see his smile. It's great to see that guy, <laughs> that Malaysian smile again. And uh, he didn't even know he was racing here until the day after Texas uh, last week. You know, we were in Texas. Uh, I'm working in the World Championship too, and we were in Texas last week. And the, he, the team manager basically said, told him on the Monday, hey, do you want to race in Albacete? And he, he smiled and said, well, it's not up to me. It's up to you guys. And, uh, and uh, for us racers, any race for us, it's uh, it's a yes. So, uh, no, it was great to see him. And uh, he actually said he struggled a bit at the beginning of the race um, to try to pull away. But then for some reason, he, he could keep that pace uh, pretty quick. And uh, and uh, Garzo basically uh, was running a little bit slower than him lap by lap. But um, I just want to say also, you know, it's great to have Suter back in the World Championship. Uh, they're back in the World Championship. There was a time where uh, Suter weren't anymore there. It was all Calix and uh, Calix and, and the uh, Tech 12 bike. So uh, now we got the uh, Suter back in and it seems to be working better uh, as we see. There we are. Hafe Sirin takes his trophy and he will be spraying the champagne. Fortunately, these riders are old enough to spray champagne as well. Yes. Uh, or sometimes you'll see one rider that's underage and the rest are champagne. So it's kind of like unfair that they're getting the yeah. yeah. Let's that's get the national anthem then. Happy Siren takes the podium. The national anthem of Malaysia rings out here in Albacete. And it's only a matter of time before we get the champagne sprayed. There oh, we go. gas card? Gas card? I think they just gave him a, like a... I think the winner gets like... Uh, f three, four, or five hundred bucks of uh, free gas for a Repsol. Oh, that's the reason to go race by itself, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Just pull up in your car and <laughs> bring out that <laughs> that gold card out. I think that that's what they just handed him. Yeah, absolutely. So I remember Remy Gardner in Barcelona. He won the race, and he came back. <laughs> I saw him with this big cardboard, you know, 
basically cardboard that said 500 euro free gas. Mm. And I'm like, were you going to take down the gas station and just like <laughs> try to ring it up or so? Manhandle it through the door sort of thing. <laughs> oh dear, there we go. A great race in the European Moto2 Championship. No pod no uh, champagne being sprayed though on the uh, No, on what's the up with that? Yeah. We'll have to find out what's going on there. <laughs> there we are. So a great race in Moto2 here in Albacete. We'll move on to Moto3 in just a few moments time. The Junior European, sorry, the Junior European, that doesn't make sense. The Junior uh, World Moto3 Championship is on the way next. Here is the championship for the FIM CV Repsol in Moto2. And of course it does reflect the race results. Hapish Sirin finishes five points ahead of Hector Garzo. Fernandez in third position. Jason Uribe is inside the top 10. Lucas Tolovic, who came from the back of the grid into 11th position. Hiroki Ono on his debut for the NTS team. Odendahl's teammate, of course, is in 12th place. And uh, Jukka Miglovka rounds out the order in 15th position. What a race we have had in the European Moto2 Championship. We move on next to round one of the Junior Moto3 World Championship. <laughs> 